if you ever have to ship large or awkward items, this video is for you. I'm going to show you how to make a DIY shipping box. First, let's talk about supplies. You'll need cardboard sheets or scrap cardboard, and you can purchase these sheets from Uline, which I have here in my video. They're around a couple dollars per piece, depending on the size. Next, you'll need rulers, a large and a small, a tape measure, a knife or a box cutter, and a bone scoring slash folding tool, which will help to make the creases in the cardboard. You'll also need a hot glue gun and shipping tape. Now is the trickiest part, figuring out your measurements. You'll have to do some math to determine how to shape your box and make best use of the cardboard. You'll want to measure your piece and measure your cardboard and then do some calculations. Now in this stage, you don't want to forget to allow for space for your packing materials and cushioning around your piece when you're in this planning stage. So for this video, I'm building a, a box for a large piece. This is a washing machine topper, and this is gonna require more than one piece of cardboard to make my final box. It's, it's actually helpful to buy the largest sheets of cardboard that you think you might need so that you can ideally construct your box out of just one single sheet. So as you're figuring out your box dimensions, it's important to remember that you want each side of your box to be the same size as the opposite side. So each side should mirror the side opposite of it. So that way your box is going to be a nice and even square or rectangle shape when you finish the box. So it, it can be helpful to reference a spare, just an extra cardboard box you have laying around if you get confused with the measurements or how your final box is going to come together. So once I had, I had done my calculations and I had my box dimensions figured out, I started measuring, scoring, and folding my cardboard. So the main shell of the box will only have one seam, which will be secured with hot glue and reinforced with shipping tape. So first I'm marking my lines and then I'm coming back in with the scoring tool to help create a nice straight fold for my box. Apply firm pressure when you're using the scoring tool. And this tool, you can pick one up on Amazon for five or $10, and it's really, really helpful for getting these perfectly straight seams in your cardboard. Now I'm adding in extra space for my bubble wrap and packing paper and anything else you'll need to secure your items. I added around one inch all the way around my piece for, for this particular box. Now I'm marking and scoring for my second fold, and as you can see, the the again the scoring tool gives you a beautiful straight fold line. All right, now I'm marking and scoring my third fold. You can see it's starting to come together now as I mark in this line and I do my scoring. And then as I fold this piece, you'll start to see, okay, yeah, she is making a box. Okay, now I need to make my seam with the last little leftover edge here. So you wanna leave yourself at least an inch for this piece, cause that's where we'll be putting our hot glue. Again, I'm measuring the side of the box so I know that it will match up with its opposite side again for that perfect rectangular shape. and there we have the seam. Now our box shell is ready to be hot glued and taped. I love this Ryobi battery operated hot glue gun. It's, it's amazing. This is so satisfying. Now I forgot to film myself gluing the main seam, but you should apply hot glue along the entire length and hold it secure while the glue dries. And then you'll next wanna reinforce this edge with shipping tape. This is how the box looks from the inside. Now I'm gonna start measuring my end pieces, which I will insert in the two open ends of my box. Again, ideally I wouldn't need to use separate pieces for this. I could just, you know, cut and mark my folds just like a classic cardboard box. But again, because of the size, I have to use extra pieces. And you know, it's gonna make for a nice puzzle for the recipient to figure out how to open this box since it's gonna be completely sealed and it's not gonna have that, you know, simple opening method as they usually do. So once my edges are measured, I started cutting them out, being cautious not to cut my table.
So I'm marking my ends and making sure I leave a lip all the way around, which will be folded and hot glued inside the box. For this step, make sure you're accounting for the thickness of the cardboard, since the edges will be glued in the inside of the box. So we're thinking interior dimensions, not exterior dimensions here. And once the edges are ready, you can start scoring and folding the edges and be sure to do a dry fit along the way so that you can make sure that things are fitting properly. Now you can put your ends in place and secure them with a hot glue gun, followed by shipping tape once the hot glue is dry. And that's how you make a DIY shipping box. Thanks for watching.